Hey, hey, Tom here. I just had a canceled meeting or <laughs> a meeting that didn't happen. So I figured like I'll take the time and show a little bit behind the scenes on this footer logo, the base dash footer logo that I made in Unicorn Studio. This is totally off the cuff. This is totally impromptu, but I've had enough people ask me about uh, the Unicorn Studio workflow. So I figured I'd give you a little bit of behind the scenes of how this works and then uh, maybe build, build it from scratch so you can see how I did this in Unicorn Studio. Okay, let me switch over to Unicorn Studio, which is one of my pin tabs. And here is the actual file. Um, you'll notice here, it does look pretty different. Um, the, just the effect in here. I'm not sure how well this is gonna come over on the screen recording, but it's a, it's a lot less dense inside of uh, Unicorn Studio. And uh, to be honest, I'm not really sure why. <laughs> I've, I've talked to the Unicorn Studio founder a little bit about this in the past, um, but it's just kind of like screen density. Uh, the way it renders is a little bit different. I don't understand the technical reasons for it, but I've gotten used to it. So just if you're using a dither effect, know that the way that you design it inside of Unicorn might look different uh, when you use it. So um, let's go through the layers here. So I've got a duotone layer here that is stripping out any colors that are, it's basically just making it black and white. I've got a dither effect that's using the Bayer 8x8 uh, dithering pattern. Um, I've got a progressive blur. That's what's responsible for this uh, mouse tracking. I've got this blind effect which I'll show you how to, how to uh, I did that in a second. I've got this vignette, which is responsible for the edges being nice and uh, faded out. I've got the image, which is the logo, SVG, looking good, and then background. This is a really, you know, pretty basic, what, what, you know, six layers, seven layers here. Um, it's not that difficult to create, uh, so let's do it from scratch. Let's see how we can do it. We go, I'll just duplicate this since I get all the sizing and all that kind of stuff. Oh, look. It looks a little different here. I duplicated it and the uh, the density is different. I don't know why, I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's just something I've gotten used to. So let's uh, delete everything and um, see if we can recreate it from scratch. Um, delete, delete, delete. And I'll just kind of do this from memory. Okay, so the first step um, that I have here is uh, I've got a background. So I've just got a, a black background. It's not really showing up. Again, there's some weird quirks with this tool. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I've kind of gotten used to them. Like there's there's this uh, halftone pattern that's indicating that it's not there, but it, it fully is. Um, even even though it was hidden, it's it's still there. I'm not sure why this is showing up as uh, empty, um, but it's there. Uh, so let's uh, do the next step. Um, I'm gonna add an image. I'm gonna choose the, uh, let's see, base dash word mark there. Bring that in. Oh, image. Base dash, okay. And then I'll just resize this. Very similar Figma controls, you know, nothing nothing too fancy. I'm holding shift uh, to resize it and it kind of auto scales it to the aspect ratio. So there's that. Um, so let's see here. Let's add the blinds effect. Okay, so by default, the blinds effect is very different than what I showed. Um, one of the things that you have to take into account when you're doing uh, Unicorn Studio is everything is layered. It's it's much more like designing in Photoshop than it is like Figma, um, where you're kind of like adding and subtracting and removing stuff. You have to be very conscious of what things are beneath each other in the layer tree. Um, so this blinds one is affecting the base dash one, but I don't want it to affect um, other layers necessarily. So let's go in here to the effects panel. I'm gonna choose dither. Um, you can do glyph or the standard dither. The first one that comes in here is the blue noise, which is a great look, but I use the Bayer one. Um, and I'm not sure what's going on here. Why is this not? Let's see, scale. Am I missing something here? Uh-oh. Let me pause and fix this. Okay. I actually had to create a new file. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's going on. I do that a lot in Unicorn Studio. So, I, I, like, this is one thing you have to take into account. This is built by a single guy. Uh, this tool. I'm not. I'm not like trying to. It's it's amazing uh, that someone was able to build this. But it's it's really like sometimes they're a little bit finicky. I'll give it all the grace in the world. It's like an unbelievable tool. So um, I don't mind uh, creating a new file from scratch because usually everything is really basic. Like you're talking like five or ten layers at the most. So creating stuff from scratch, not a big deal. Um, unless you've you know, got some stuff dialed in, uh, then it can be a little bit more fuss, but I, I don't mind. So I've got the uh, background image blinds and the dither. 
All right, so the dither effect is not really showing up here. Let me show and zoom in. It's barely there. And that's because of these threshold layers. So I always turn that threshold all the way up to 100%. So in, in Unicorn, 50% is kind of like the middle. Okay, think about it. And it's not like a scale of one to 10. It's like, is there a little bit of a lot? Most things come in with default 50% mix. I just blitz that out all the way up to 50% or to 100% from 50. So uh, what you see here is now you get this little bit of a dither effect. Um, and then let me turn on the blinds. So each layer can be animated. Um, so a blinds is one that you know comes in with this effect. You just hit this play button and then it animates. Dither can also be animated, but does this, I never use this one. Um, it just kind of goes to a, a strange direction. Uh, you can change the speed of that, but it, it's not really affected. I use all that much. Um, blinds though, I use this all the time. So that effect is way too much. Um, let me make this a little bit more like what I have on the site. So I went all the way down to like 1% frequency. And uh, I don't really remember which one of these I, uh, I messed around with. I think I went smoothing, I don't know. There's there's no wrong, oh, that's, okay. If, you, if you've seen the, the loader effect that I have for base dash, this is how I did it. So it's got this dispersion. Um, cool chromatic aberration happening there. Um, so that looks really nice. It's kind of like causing it to fade out on the sides. I love that. Um, but I kind of want it to distort a little bit uh, underneath it. I don't know which one is there. Um, let's see here. Let's turn down that speed a lot. A little bit more. All right, that's looking good. So with this there's, there's no hard coded stuff. Like you're in here, if you're making stuff in Unicorn, you're just, you're just feeling it. You're just like scrubbing and be like, oh, right there, right there. I don't know. There's no round numbers. There's no eight pixels. There's no border radiuses. You just kind of figure it out. I don't know what half of these things do the second time I use them, but while I'm tweaking them, they, they make a difference. So it's just kind of don't worry about what the labels are. It's just a thing that, you know, angle is pretty obvious. You know, that makes it spin, distortion, I guess it's pretty obvious what it does. Sometimes you, you drag these sliders and they do nothing. Um, and it's just because I think a lot of the shaders, they come with these these default properties, these these uh, um, pr parameters, and some of them just don't use it. Like uh, dispersion, I didn't realize what was happening there for a long time. Um, okay, and then radius, I don't know. Okay, that's the uh, the distance from the middle. So you can see like low radius is right there. And then there's, imagine that there's a circle that this is using. So we got a cool effect right there. I'm gonna make this logo a little bit lower here. Okay, cool. Now the duo tone, I use this a lot. Uh, the duo tone basically, there's like visual artifacts that happen with any file. Um, so duo tone, what I do is I use our brand colors. Um, most of the time it's just black and white. Um, so there we go. I get rid of that chromatic aberration in this one because again, the, the aesthetic of the website that I have here, um, right here is very black and white. So I just wanted this to be pure, pure color. Um, so I use that duotone filter also inside of base dash a lot for our loading states, empty states, all that kind of stuff. It just makes it so that it's predictable. Um, I'm starting to use a little bit more color, but it's just, a, it, it's not something I use that often. Okay. So, um, that's that. And then, uh, there's a few more really crucial effects that I have in here. Uh, let me show you which one to, 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 to um, stylize progressive blur. Okay, so this progressive blur, when you add it in there, it doesn't do much. I'm gonna put it right up there, okay. So the reason I put it up here is because I don't want it to affect the dither, because if I put progressive blur, okay, I'll, I'll just start there, progressive blur. Okay, so uh, this is kind of a blur like that. So if I put it above the dither, it will blur the nice dithered boxes, the little pixels in there. And I don't want that, I want it to be crispy. Um, so that's not the look I'm going for. So I put it under the dither. Usually it's duotone dither. My file's always at the top level. Like those two first layers are pretty crucial. And then, oh, my screen went black and now it's back. Okay. Um, and uh, so then the progressive blur is right here. So what that's doing is it's, it's causing things to, to bleed out. Really cool look. Um, but what I wanna do is I wanted to track my mouse. Okay, so this slider is a little bit counterintuitive, but it's basically how much it follows your mouse cursor. So imagine that there's a circle. That, that see the, the purple circle? Imagine that that's moving exactly positioned with my, my cursor. I can have it do a little bit of follow, so it's just kind of like barely moving. Or I can have it do a lot of follow, so it's like literally 
as I move, it's following up. I don't, I don't want it to be super over the top. It's already a pretty over the top effect. Um, and then momentum. So this basically gives it a little bit of shift, a little bit of like sway as you move your cursor. So it's not so literal. It makes it feel a little bit more organic. Uh, so it kind of fades up as you stop. That looks really nice. Okay. So the last thing I put in there is I use this vignette tool all the time. So the vignette tool is at first glance kind of not not useful. You know, it's not, I thought about like an Instagram filter where I'm like blurring out the sides or whatever it is. Like that's literally what it is. Um, but what are this thing, what, what this thing actually unlocks is the ability to have more full bleed effects. So I've got this black background. I don't want, let me turn off the vignette. I don't want this edge to be super cut. I want it to feel like it's part of the page and it just, it's floating there. Okay. So what the vignette allows me to do is it allows me to take this vignette, put it below the dither, um, right there. And then I'm able to figure out where my frame is clipped off. Now that by itself, I'm still getting that same effect, but look on the edges, look on the edges. It's like, it's blurring a little bit on the H and the B, which is really cool. Like that effect right there is really nice. So you get that like soft gradient, uh, without having to do hardly any work. I'm going to make it right about there is good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to skew and basically skew just flattens the circle. So, um, it goes off to the side. Let me make it smaller so I can kind of see the effect a little bit bigger, uh, better. So when I skew it, it makes it into an oval, right? Like that. That's about the right shape. And then I'll make it just a little bit bigger. And then I can also drag this around on the screen. And I want to put it so that those tiny pixels at the bottom of the screen aren't touching. So it feels like everything is diffused down, not a hard edge. I use this also all the time because when, when, when you've got this dither effect, stuff can go off the screen like it can go over here and it, i don't want it to look like a box i want it to look like an element that happens to be contained on the page the vignette is really crucial for that effect so um that one is really cool it's a little bit too elliptical a little bit too obvious so i'm going to make it a little bit more skewed kind of like that good yeah because it's not going on the sides um it's just going on the bottom and that is basically i'm gonna move it up just a little um, yeah, you just kind of like, I hate to use the term vibe, but you just kind of like figure it out. Let's see what works, what doesn't. I don't know. This is like a, a little bit of a different vibe. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. So that hard edge right there. Cause it's got the, that's cool right there on the H. Um, you see how it still shows it. I might, mm, I kind of like this better. Um, so that's really cool. You can also do stuff. Everything can track the mouse so I can make the vignette reveal. Wow, that's cool. Okay, uh, maybe like slight vignette there. So it's kind of like a spotlight that's following it. Ooh, that's cool. Ooh, yeah. Um, so I'm gonna tone it down a little bit. One other thing that uh, is kind of a map, uh, like a, a thing I didn't realize until I had been using Unicorn for a while is these are all percentage based, zero to 100. And the slider like goes up to 100, right? Or down to zero. But it also goes past, if you hold your mouse over this, you can have it go over 100. And also you can have it go negative, which is where a lot of the cooler effects happen, is if you go negative on the values, um, things start to get really interesting. So actually, I really like the way this is kind of ghosted on the edges, I'm not gonna lie. That is super cool. Um, huh, how is that working? What did I do different? Cool. Okay. It's the vignette is tracking my cursor. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do here. Um, so you can also do like 3D axis tilt. Um, and this is where the, uh, the, the negative values really come into play. Like if I, if I, if I wanted to be repulsed by the cursor as opposed to it, like looking at it, um, I'll just take this down and then go negative with it. So it's kind of like the, the cursor is emphasizing it a little bit differently. I'm not going to use the, uh, the axis tilt for this one though. So that's basically how you do it. Um, and then you can preview it. It's there, it works, it looks amazing. Um, and then you just uh, add it to your file. So I use Framer for, for our website. Um, the way to add it there is you just hit export and then go to embed. And then you've got a Framer component. You just copy this and paste it into Framer and then add your pro project ID. And it just works. Um, so like, yeah, that's, it's super, super easy. 
Um, if you're handing this off to a developer or putting it inside of an app, you go to code, export that. It's super easy to add to code. Like I use these way too much. I'm probably overusing it. But um, the, the benefit of this is it's it's so performant. Um, like better than GIF, I don't have to have a Lottie. I barely have to have external dependencies. Like it just it works really well. And I think I think it's such a cool look. Plus I can do all sorts of crazy stuff with this. Like let me let me go back and show you. Um, I've got a ton of files in here. I've got all sorts of like AI loading states. Um, like this one's super cool. This is our generating chart. Um, oop, lines right there. So that was when when the AI inside of base dash is kind of like pending. This is the loading state. I'm not going to show you exactly how I did that one because it's kind of cool. Um, we also do stuff with like light mode and dark mode. Uh, so like I've got a ton of of these. Uh, let me show you one for an empty state that I was working on earlier. This is what it looks like when we got no charts inside of base dash. This is an empty state. It's got this cool like 3D stacked grid. It's just kind of like hanging out. Um, I also have a light mode. So I use that duotone, basically just flip, invert it. And that works for light mode. I export two different versions of the asset, give it to developers, and then we've got light and dark mode support. Um, there's a lot of stuff that I'll do that's a little bit more custom um, for light, light and dark mode. Um, like, uh, let me show you this one here. Um, upgrade logo. Oh, this one I did yesterday. Oh, this is so cool. <laughs> I think this is so cool. Um, but the light mode one of this was actually like it needed to be a separate file. I couldn't do this with um, two different files. Um, and they're two different vibes. Like uh, if I go back here, upgrade, logo, light, somewhere in here. I don't know. Uh, but it's a very different look. And um, I will have to find that. I hope I didn't lose it. It's got to be in here somewhere. Anyway, so sometimes you have to do very different versions. Sometimes you have to do the same version and it's a quick export um but this is the logo we made i'm going to share this for uh let's do share 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 allow remixing so people can create copies of this um my username tom john design like or follow um and uh save okay tom john design i've never done this cool it's available thank thank got it okay uh so there's the link i will share this and you can mess around with it and um i guess let me know how it goes all right see ya